When it comes to roadside Americana, there are few things on a higher pedestal than diners. Simultaneously mass-produced and individual, these eateries have been serving locals and passers through across the country for well over a century, and their various looks, settings, and signage draw the eye like nothing else. I encourage you to go back to early March, and March is my favorite diner time of the year, to hear part one of Scott of Diner Day in the USA and I breaking down diners, both collectively as documents of the first half of the 20th century, and individually as primary sources of their respective settings. Admittedly, part two does contain its share of us gushing about our favorite diners and the meals that they serve, but if you frequent one yourself, I think you'll forgive us. For there is something really special about grabbing a booth or a spot at the counter, flipping the ceramic mug over for coffee, and waiting for some comfort food while taking in the ambiance of a diner. So before we get back into talking diners and things, maybe um, since initially this is for a little extra information for, for folks, um, what prompted the uh, the Instagram page Diner Day in the USA? Yeah, I have a I've always had a personal Instagram account, and every so often I put my trips to diners on there, mm-hmm. um, along with other kind of just random stuff from my life. And and um, my wife said, you know, have you thought about just like doing just a diner page? Mm-hmm. And hadn't really thought of just I, I'm like, well. I guess. And I, you know, and so I actually started and I think what's, what's funny is again, going back to my days of being in Lehigh Lehigh Valley and trips with my, my parents. And we would always go to like a Stewart's Mm drive-in. I don't know if you've ever experienced a Stewart's drive-in. We, well, Um, in upstate New York, there's a Stewart's, uh, but it's it's not the same. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the same. Yeah. Um, I've been doing a lot of travel up in upstate New York. So I've seen these Stewart shops. Yeah. It's different from the Stuart root beer shops that I was mm-hmm. familiar with back okay. when I was growing up. So we would always stop at these on the way out to Western Pennsylvania, this Stuart um, root beer, kind of almost like a drive-in. So kind of like and, an A&W. Kind yeah, of, kind of like okay. an A&W. Yeah. And um, so we would stop there. So my, you know, so <laughs> my first post, if you look, is a, is a place in New Jersey that's a Stuart. Um, so it, it's kind of a diner. So but it's not really yeah. kind of a, di- it's more like a drive-in, which, so I think, you know, when I started, I wasn't sure what to, how to do it, what to do. Right. And so over time I've kind of evolved into, okay, what is, what, do, what's the brand? Like, right. what do I want to do with this? Right. You know, is it, am I doing restaurants? Am I doing diners? What classifies as a diner? You know, it's kind of evolved over time. Um, so, but it is kind of funny that the first, my first picture on the Instagram account <laughs> like is my first like diner a, picture. Is not it's a not diner, right? right. It's not necessarily a diner. It's kind of a drive-in. Yeah, but um, it kind of the same sort of thing. It's a nostalgia, vintage sort of thing. So that that took place back in two thousand, not that long ago, two thousand nineteen, mm-hmm. and that was right before the pandemic. Right. So I started content right before the pandemic started, and then um, and then everything was shut down. Um, so it was Including really diners. Really, Right. Yeah. Especially yeah. diners. Diners got hit really, really hard, you know, with all the, the, you know, the state restrictions yeah. and, and other things that places just wouldn't be open. They'd and be, they weren't, they weren't, they couldn't easily trans no. transform it into, to go food right away. No, other you know, some, too. you know, some put places outside, you know, tables and chairs. It's, it's but, a weird um, thing at a diner to yeah, be, I did it yeah, a few times. I'm like, it is. this isn't right. Like, <laughs> right. No, it totally, totally is. So, you know, since, so since 2019. And so I started just to follow people who share the same interests. Yeah. Um, with diners, um, kind of paintings, artwork, signs, neon, um, travel. Um, you know, so I started just following a whole bunch of diners, but then I realized that there's a whole bunch of people who, are really into diners and those are the people that I got to learn. Yeah. What do they like to post? What do they like? You know, what are their, what are their interests? And so uh, I've gotten to learn a lot about just photography, Mm -hmm. how to kind of frame things, 
um, kind of a before and after, say a daylight right. shot and then a nighttime shot of the same thing. Um, so in the same post, you have a you have a post in Marietta, Georgia of a, a diner that is full neon. Mm -hmm. And then during the day, it's kind of you would never know. Right. It looks like any it's, other. Right. It's like any other place. Yeah. Um, so it's really taken a, a while. So I'm up to about 1600 followers so far. Wow. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, last, probably last couple of months has actually been quite good. Um, kind of a lot of new followers uh, over the last uh, couple of months, just with the recent posts that I've had. I, I think it's almost like the, the aesthetic that so many of those diners have and are, is just so appealing to people definitely when we couldn't go to them that's probably yeah. one reason why is because people will spend a lot of their time I, you know i wouldn't know anybody personally like this who just spent a lot of time on the internet the whole time um but you know scrolling th me um scrolling through and be like oh that's i like the way that looks you know there's just something uh you know so you know even if it was nostalgia for a time period you never experienced like it's just so like nice and, and like you know so i i guarantee you that you know, there's so many people that stumble across something like that. And like me, and that's how I stumbled across. I'm like, yeah, this is nice. Like, this is just, you know, I, I think it was suggested <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I have, um, I've been recently following other, uh, vintage, you know, kind of Instagram things and, um, did a, a episode a few weeks ago with, uh, uh, Rolando Pujol, who is the He's retrologist, awesome. and He's absolutely he, awesome. He he was just fantastic. We did a, yes. an episode about um, holiday and awesome. hojos. Yeah, yes. And it was just like it was some same kind of thing. We we're like we might not have actually experienced this in our lifetimes, but we, like you said, starting out with when you were a kid, it was like you you were like given this, like we inherited this wonderful world of you know th that those kinds of restaurants and hotels and motels and and you know systems and ways of doing things yes. and we've watched a lot of them go away but we've been able to preserve the ones that we we like a lot and so you know even if these places are eventually going to the wayside at least we can enjoy their their appearances for a little bit longer thanks yeah. to the instagram yeah sh so. shout out to him because you know we we've dm back and forth and one of my one of the places i grew up um going to is arthur treacher's Oh yeah. Uh, it's like a fish and chips place. And there's not many of them around, but no. um, he, he had sent me some pictures of some of his Arthur Treacher's yeah. places. It's just he's well, an he, amazing he just, source of, of just he, vintage he put, retro stuff. It's amazing. Ponderosa is now yeah, considered Ponderosa, you know, retro now. But I'm like, yeah, I mean it's it is America's roadside and it is. You know, so it, it it does count. And um, you know, for for my show's point of view, these are all products, these are all artifacts, right. they're all you know, reflections of the society and the times in which they were made. And subsequently when they have, you know, they, they do influence, you know, throughout, like I, my, my wife and I, we met when we were going to school in central New York, right on the shores of Lake Ontario in uh, Oswego, New York. And there's some great diners in Oswego. Um, last time we were back was last spring. And unfortunately our favorite one was, was no more the Ritz. I mean, that's a diner name. And um, there was Wade's. That was a that was a classic diner. As soon as you walk in, there's the flat top mm. grill. The the cook is actually looking at you, you know, and like plate size pancakes, you know. Um, nice. It's it, fantastic. But it was, you know, we were, you know, poor college kids. You know, didn't have a lot of money, and but any night of the week that we didn't want, you know, the food at the dining hall or something like that, like let's go to a diner. And all we would need is 20 bucks. I would cover it, you know, <laughs> which right. sounds like a lot in traditional diner, you know, terminology. But uh, for us, that was affordable and we could get a full meal and drinks and, every, you know, I would always have my yep. coffee and my omelet. And, you know, that's that's how you can get it done. So um, and I, I I think the audience, you know, to go back to the uh, the form that I have has kind of maintained itself throughout. Uh, wouldn't you say that it, it's never really um gone away from you know diners collectively as as a group have generally existed for you know not the poor and destitute but definitely not the the rich and well to do no they're they're the they're a staple right there if you if you want if you need a if you need a quick meal you know where to go right um and a lot of these businesses 
and you you know from your time that you probably spent up in Oswego, New York, and upstate New York, and those diners, they've been family run for years. Yeah. Right. And sometimes they'll just pass through generation to generation that it it's just the way. And most of them are owned by Greek families. Right. Um, as it turns out, they're, you know, almost a whole bunch of the ones that I follow are owned by just wonderful Greek families, just generation over generation. Mm -hmm. Um, and because they maintain, they they understand the history, they understand the value to their customers, they understand mm -hmm. um why they're there. And they're there to serve their community, they're there to serve their patrons who come in and expect a good meal. And yeah. that's that's what it's about. And and a lot of it goes back to, you know, the the first Greek families that owned those restaurants, a lot of them were themselves immigrants. Yes. And the you know, that era of, you know, I'm thinking Greek immigration, early 20th century, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of them fleeing the, the, the wars of the, you know, former Ottoman empire and, and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get to the country um, anywhere, you know, coming to the United States, you know, for that reason. And they had that motivation of, like we were saying before, let's start my own business. And, uh, you know, that, that, also here in new england runs pretty deep with the pizza parlors too like the yes. pizza house is almost guaranteed yes. to be a, a greek family that runs it and that attitude of like you know i am going to make my place in this new world i'm going to you know make my mark and, and have my own business and everything like that um and you know a lot of the greek recipes will show up on those diner menus and it's like confirms like yes this is a greek family that runs it because they have you know the the slovaki yeah, right they always have have, uh, the baklava you know, baklava you know they'll, they'll make sure it's there um the hero feta cheese and the hero and they'll, they'll yeah, have the there but you know sometimes they even have the greek section of the menu like the back absolutely cake. do um but they also know that not everybody's there for that and so they'll have pancakes and waffles and eggs and all the the normal breakfast look, stuff breakfast look, all day if, look if they if they have patty melts i'm all in yes <laughs> you, you give me a patty melt that that's my go-to or in the in breakfast it's you know two eggs over easy with hash browns and toast yes and you can throw in some bacon in there too but yeah i i think about so you were saying before about um you know, is it a diner? Is it a drive-in? <laughs> is it, I guess we could throw in the right. word dive and think of Guy Fieri. Yeah. Um, you know, he did that program for a while and I don't know if he still does on uh, Food Network. I think and, so. Yeah. Um, where he would visit one of those kinds of establishments, you know, however categorized. And boy, when I'd watch those shows, I was just like, I want to be there. I want, you know, especially the diners. Right. I'm like, I, I need to have you know, a cup of coffee. And it's funny because like at home, we were saying before about you know preparing food, trying to be like a diner. When I'm at home, my coffee is black. I don't put anything in it. But when I go to a diner, it's always I put one cream in. You know, it's like, that's 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 your diner diner, that's diner, your coffee. diner coffee. Yeah, I, I yeah. And it's it's funny like that. So whenever he's visiting, it, and um, the main diner up in Wells uh, is yes. one of the places that he's visited, and you know they'll let you know that as soon as you walk in. Yes, <laughs> there's lots of yes, but, but they Been have. There. That kind of, um, I, I, what I like about that diner is, you know, if we were to answer all the questions for the main diner, it would probably hit a lot of the same answers as all the other ones, but they also have very local, local, local food. Like there's lobster yes. in like three or four places on the menu, you know, there's yes. going to be, um, blueberries, you know, fresh blueberries right. in their pancakes and you know they are the main diner um that's that's their whole thing and uh you know and and if a place can you know get away with a spanish american war slogan as their <laughs> gift shop then that's pretty good <laughs> i always like huh you know remember the main um you, you know that that's there but you know they answer those questions but i would say that nowadays and probably for a long time in that particular diner's history their intended audience isn't necessarily, you know, longshoremen going off to, you know, or lobstermen getting ready. It's the tourists, you know, it's in, tourists in summertime. Yep. It's lines out the door. And, you you know, as soon as you drive through that section of wells, you're like, yep, <laughs> I'm not going there. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, I've stopped there. Um, I stopped there once and um, yeah, lobster roll. I mean, they do it right. Yes. Right. So I've been, I've, had numerous lobster rolls 
there's very good. Their fish chowder and their clam chowder we we had very very good. Um, and it is it kind of checks all the boxes off for kind of a just a really good diner, yeah. right? And it, at the far end, it has one of those neon clocks, right? Um, that says the main diner. So look, I'm always about the neon clocks too. Yeah. If they have a neon <laughs> clock, you know, even on one of my Instagram posts, I just I put all these clocks um from all these different diners yeah. around so and actually main diner is one of them within that series of photos so really really fun where do you think um when so many of these diners went all in on neon mm. uh what do you think was the motivator behind that was it just so that it would stand out in the nighttime um I th- or yeah i mean i to, think to match you know, so many of the other businesses that were doing it yeah i good question i you know really like to do a little bit more digging on that idea. I mean, my thought is that a- along with the Chrome, you know, mm-hmm. with neon, it's just going to pop so bright right. and really trying to grab people's attention from the road, you know, from the highway or from the roadway, whatever it is. Um, it just kind of go, they just kind of go together. I'm just yeah. thinking back on, on some of these places that I've stopped at one in um, Milford, Pennsylvania, uh village diner um, in Milford. Um, and they have a beautiful neon sign, um, beautiful chrome um, kind of exterior, uh, just kind of pops. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, you know, my thought is it, it's just a way of saying, come here, right? You know, this and, is the place. And I think they right? also kind of use it as a way to communicate what their status is in society, you know, just kind of be like, yeah, yeah. once again, you know, in the daytime, you could see it clear as day that, you know, it's, it's like I said before, just kind of a, you know, greasy spoon you're gonna get what you get you know kind of thing it's gonna right. be good it's not gonna be you know uh and it's you get what you pay for kind of thing and at night yeah it's not you don't want to be uh expecting you know fine dining it's just like oh yeah look at that place it's lit up just like a casino <laughs> you know right. it's, it's, you know, yeah. lit up you know just like the the motel right, right across the street from it <laughs> that's um, right they, they go hand in hand so it's all that that mid 20th century um you know, wordless communication that they, they can yes. get across just from the, the signs and the, you know, having the clock in there also tells you, I mean, because most restaurants don't have clocks um, that tells you something about their, at least traditional clientele is that people are looking at the the clock. They got to make sure that they, you know, can get their food and dash off to work or, you know, on back on the road because they, they're traveling and they, they don't want to waste any time. And some of, some of those going back to the kind of the prefab diners, these Jerry O'Mahony, diners they're right in the middle so when you come into the right through the middle of the diner right at the entrance to the um to the back where it goes in the back sometimes they have a kitchen in the front but some in the back where they maybe do like food prep and other stuff there's always a clock right up there Mm -hmm. like in those sorts of diners they always have those clocks up there right so they're so um it's just part of how they were made yeah. You know, that that's where the clock was. And, but other places they, they have, they have a neon clock and with their insignia or, or yeah. whatever it is. And they'll, they'll put it on, you know, what are your thoughts? End. What are your thoughts about the diners? I know we've, we've all been to them that seem to kind of go over the top of the, the 1950s rock and roll. You know, it's almost like they're trying to be one of those paintings where Marilyn Monroe and, and uh elvis like over the and, top yeah and and you know um are all hanging out together mm-hmm. you know it's like they have the jukebox going i'm like when i when i go into some places like that um they almost seem like themed it's a bit of a turnoff for me anyway uh up in montreal there's a, a, a chain of them called nickels and mm-hmm. um i think celine dion either used to or still is like the owner of them uh yeah and because they always have a picture of her in the doorway. Yeah. And um, it was like that, where it was like only 50s music playing all the time. And there's like a picture everywhere of like, there's James Dean and over there. And it was just like, you know, all the booths with like 57, she- you know, Chevrolets. And it, it was just like, okay, we get it. Like, this is <laughs> like, to me, I like it so much when I walk into a diner and it's not trying so hard to remind me I'm in a diner, you know? Yeah. No, um, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I think that, you know, places will just kind of go over the top for, for those people who maybe don't travel, right. They just yeah. hear about diners and they, um, but I'm, I'm all about kind of the low key kind of diner. And I get why they want to do that. Cause they yeah. want to, they want to kind of show it off. They want to kind of go over the top, uh, maybe a little bit too much tchotchke. 
but um, they're trying to make it very diner, very right. much a diner. And you're like, you don't, you could probably scale that back 50% and still be yeah. a, a really good diner. But because yeah. what's funny to me is like, I don't think teenagers in the 50s really hung out at diners all that much. Like some of them maybe worked at a diner, but they would usually go to like the pizza parlor or, you know, the somewhere there's ice cream room, shop room to dance, you know, like maybe I'm being too cliche about them too, but it just like, I don't, to me, diner, like my, I think I can say honestly, my all time favorite work of art is night hawks um you know the, the 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 diner scene in the city where you just see like the guy getting the coffee ready and there's a couple that's of one you know that's right that is just to me that's what i look for you know when yeah. i think of diner I, and there's nothing better in my opinion i think i know you you've been there before too where you're like mm. 10 30 at night you're driving you're getting tired but you're not quite ready to you know give it up for the night you're like okay I'm just gonna have a late supper and you go into some diner and you're like one of three people there and it's just like the best. Well, you know, I, it, it's funny there, there was a place that that's exactly what happened to me. I was kind of in this situation where I was, I was traveling between Pittsburgh and Altoona, Pennsylvania. And it's about, I don't know, hour and a half to almost two hours between the two and kind of in the middle is this place, um, Dean's diner. And so I was, I was traveling kind of from Altoona to Pittsburgh. And I knew that this place was open and it was late. It was probably like 11, 1130 at night. And I had that, I had that sense of what you're talking about that mm -hmm. I envisioned that picture in my mind. And there I was sitting at the counter <laughs> and I just, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to have coffee and some pie. That's oh, what I'm going to do. I'm just going to have coffee <laughs> And, and and the waitress was so frazzled. I said, you know what? I just want some of that pie over there and a coffee. That's all I want. And she said, that's all you want, honey. I'm like, that's all I want. <laughs> and I'll be on my way. Thank you for responding and, me with honey. That just right, made it. I know. Well, like, you know, like, that, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, 1130 at night. And then when I, when I stepped out of the place, you know, it's so, there's not much around that mm -hmm. this particular diner. So it's so dark. And when you're taking pictures from the outside, looking in, it just has this appearance of that, that picture you yeah, mentioned. So cozy. Um, just like, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That coziness. Um, so and that's just something that really cannot be replicated with no. the, the franchised uh, restaurants and, and Can't. You know, those kinds of, you know, I think there was, I don't know if it exists anymore for a while. They had a, a soda jerk, you know, like a, you know, ice cream parlor slash diner called Johnny Rockets. Yes, you know that chain and the, the paper mm -hmm. hats and everything, and then you know, every ten minutes they would all dance on the counter and um, you know to whatever jukebox song came on. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's like no. somebody that just kind of took one part, one aspect of it, and said, yeah, we're gonna make it the attraction instead of like, no, I'm being attracted by the quietness of it. I'm being attracted by that's the, right. Um, you know the simplicity. You know, that's that's the attractive nature of it. And that's probably always been there. I guarantee you that's why uh, so many people have made it their community hub. You know, like yeah. you were saying before, where it's like that's where people and, you know, emanate from and to at, at the beginning and end of every day is is the diner. Um, and, you know, there's so much that it, it says without having to, <laughs> you know, yeah. elevate the uh, the decor to to look like you know elvis's you know living room or something right right yeah, it's uh so before we we depart um best diner you've ever been to what would you say is the best diner? oh that's so that's such a hard that's such a hard question i know we talked about palace a lot that is really one of my that is really one of my favorites i think you know i'll just go nostalgic and I'll just say I'll just say City View Diner because look, I grew up there mm. in in Pennsylvania. It kind of sits on top of a hill, overlooks kind of Allentown. Um there's so much it's been so much has changed mm -hmm. in that area, but yet the City View Diner remains. Um so I'd say I'd say City View City View Diner just from a nostalgic point of view. Um you know, probably the next time I'm down there, I'll probably go back there. Um, <laughs> every time I, you know, in Lehigh Valley, I always stop in yeah. the City View Diner. 
is it cash only? Do they still just take cash or no? Do, not that they... one is that one. You can you you can use credit cards, okay. but yeah, like Palace, yeah, the ATM is outside, so right. you can get some cash. But look, I've been to a bunch of places in California, you know, in San Francisco, awesome, awesome diners out in 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 California, um, St. Louis, mm-hmm. um, New Orleans. I was just in New Orleans recently. I've been in New Orleans like two or three times and amazing places down in new orleans um so but i'll just i'll just say city view just to make it that that's fair enough and i it because the rainbow diner because the rainbow diner is no longer there yeah so you can't say that one but right at the end of the rainbow that's right is is the city view yes and um well scott i can't thank you enough for the quick turnaround it was like diner time that we i ordered my my uh request and it came within about what, a day and a half we were able to do yeah this. Um, it's perfect that was just perfect so i you know thank you for for uh joining me on the everything is a primary source podcast um, you're very welcome. everything including diners is a primary source and, and people can find you on instagram um at diner day in the usa and, and twitter uh, and twitter and facebook but i okay. primarily it's primarily instagram and i'll i'll post to all three platforms primarily Instagram is the place to be. Instagram is kind of the place. I I love it. Just picture caption. You know, you don't need to to do anything else. It's almost like a mini blog. It it absolutely is. And I, you know, put pictures up there, have some history behind it. Maybe my, what I experienced there. Um, So um, yeah, check it out. Yeah. And and probably probably the best feature that that brings it all together to the diners is the, the hashtag that, you know, it will, suggest things to you or if you're looking for something and that's what diners have always done it is like they are the hashtags of you know the the great that's american true. road because as you're driving around if you see that sign that says joe's diner or you know betty's or whatever that's right uh, you're almost guaranteed that that's going to be a good place you know <laughs> that yeah you that's stop right there and enjoy a, a good meal even if it adds you know a little bit more extra time instead of exactly mcdonald's so exactly Thank you so, so much, and uh, thank you for listening to the. You're so very welcome. It was a, it was a pleasure. Appreciate awesome. it. Thanks. Don't hesitate to check out both of us on Instagram, Diner Day in the USA, as well as the EPS podcast. Check me out online www.everything-history.com. We'll talk to you next time on the Everything Is a Primary Source podcast, Part Two: Palooza.